بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي علمنا أن نحمد والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد Continuing our class the Quranic Arabic Inshallah today we are going to start the program uh, We used the past month four sessions to talk about the letters So Inshallah today we have ten words ten key Quranic words that are frequently repeated the first one is easy, which is the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I just wanted you to know that uh, some statistics give us that this word is repeated in the Quran 2,850 times. So close to uh, 3,000 times. We are going to discuss the word Alim, which was repeated about 900 times. The word Kul was repeated about 400 times the word shay around 300 times rahman rahim uh, more than 300 times the word rab around a thousand times the word huwa about 500 times hakim 200 times the word inna approximately uh, 650 times and the word aziz 120 times so this is our goal for today inshallah and we will put these words together to start dealing with the Arabic text. So, inshallah, I will be moving to the board. Good. Okay, inshallah. So, let us start with the word Alim. The word Alim. Alim Alim It comes from the word Alim The root Alim which means knowledge Let's write the word Alim So the word in red is Alim which means knowledge from which the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Alim is derived So Alim means all-knowing, all, uh, all knowledgeable The one who possesses all the knowledge And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Inshallah, we will cover later more into the Arabic language The function of the definite article Al When you hear the word Al, Alim then this refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It's like in English you say The all-knowing The all-knowledgeable The one who has all knowledge So this two letters in Arabic Al means the So for example a person could be Alim uh, Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Ishaq alayhi salam in the Quran وَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ عَلِيمٍ we give Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the good news of a alim son. So a human being could be described as alim. But when we say al alim with al, this means the all knowing and that refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for now, know that the root ain, a, lam, l, and meme, ma, this refers to knowledge. Anyone here knows any other derivative of this word? So alim is all-knowing or you know depth of, of knowledge. Alim means knowledge. Anyone knows any other word you have heard in the Quran or in the Sunnah? Alim. Huh? Alim. Alim. Very good. What does the word alim mean? Alim. Alim is the person. Alim. And you can see the root again if I want to use the color code. Here is my root word in red. So this a sound is an addition to make the derivative of the word. 
So what is the root word when it comes to knowledge? It's the a la mim, right? And we can do the same thing here. So the letters in black, a la m, it means knowledge. What I'm trying to say here that in Arabic we have a root word from which we derive many, many words. Okay, for now, our key word for now in the Quranic Arabic session for today is the word alim. It has to do with knowledge. It has to do with knowing. It has to do with uh, profound type of knowledge. And, you know, we refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as al-alim. So this is the first word. Okay. So again, what does the word Ali mean? Knowledge, all knowing, the one that has profound knowledge. The second word that we are going to cover is the word Kul, Kul, two letters, Kul, Kaf and Lam, Kul. This is read as Kulli. This uh, symbol refers to double letter. I know we did not cover it in the basic Arabic, but inshallah we will. In the introduction, we will eventually. But this word is read as kulli, kulli, kulli. If I change the short vowel to this one, now how do I read it? Kullu. Okay, how about now? Kulla. So it could be kullu, kulli, or kulla. Remember that the short vowels at the last letter of the word simply give me the grammatical function and that's another level in Arabic. So, but for now, just understand the meaning of this word. What does this word mean? It means every. Every. Uh, this word in the Quran is used a lot with the word, its sister or almost twin sister is the word Shay. Shay. Shay, Shay. So this is Shay, and this is the Hamza, which sounds uh, uh, Shay. What does the word Shay mean? It means thing, thing. So if I tell you what is the meaning of Kulli Shay? Everything. Kulli Shay. What does it mean? Every. Every thing. Okay, now <coughs> I want you to examine the power of this. We are just starting with few words. Now if I tell you what is the meaning of the following segment of the Quran? Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. What does it mean? I know there are some letters that you don't exactly know or know the meaning, but you can put the general idea. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim translate Allah knows everything see it's very powerful yes you might not translate the ayah 100% uh, accurately and correctly but at least you can know 95% of what's going on and this is the idea of this course to give keywords that are frequently repeated in the Quran then easily we can put them together so when we read the Arabic text we can have 95% of the meaning from the Arabic, directly from the Arabic and this is inshallah our goal in this course. Okay, so let's do it. We had a question over there. There's, there's this calf, there's another one which is Qa, Kulli. What is the difference? Ah, okay, so the word in Arabic is Kulli with Kaf, the sound of the Ka, not the Qa. Okay, so we uh, uh, Qul is another word. 
This one with the qa, which is the profound qa, means say. And the derivatives of this word, which is one of the most frequently repeated words in the Quran, we will get to it eventually. We hear, for example, qala, qul, yaqulu. And all these words are derived from the same root verb, which means say, or to say, or, or he said, or he will say, like that. Okay, so for now, please concentrate on these three words. Kulli, Shay, and Ali. So now if I write this ayah in Arabic in front of you, what does the letter wow mean by itself? The wa by itself. Wa. What does it mean? And, and right? The the letter wa means and. For example, I say ja'a. Ja'a means came. Ja'a Muhammad wa Ahmad. What does it mean? Ja'a. Muhammad and Ahmad came. So the letter wow means and. So wa. Wallahu. I'm going to add this letter. Ba, because that's how it appears in the Quran. B, B. Kulli. Okay, here is my kulli again. I just added this letter B to it because that's how it appears in the Quran. So this addition does not change the meaning. It just, you know, gives you a slight variation of the meaning. But the word kulli still means shay, uh, means thing. Wallahu bi kulli. And then the word. What does the word shape mean? Thing. Thing. Wallahu bi kulli shayin. Ali, this is an ayah from the Quran. And Allah is knowing to everything because in English we switch the order of the words right so and Allah is knowing to everything or Allah knows everything or Allah to everything is knowing however you want to rearrange the words the idea is to try to extract the meaning from the Arabic so we got this inshallah? Yes. So this is our first ayah from the Quran that now we are able to extract the meaning and absorb the meaning directly from the Arabic without having to go to the English. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. Okay, let's move forward. Another word that I have the plan to cover today inshallah is the two twin words in the Quran and both are names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-asma al husna al-rahman and al-rahim we will write this for now without the al so we are going to write the word rah and we have alif saghira the little alif here although it's pronounced Fully and, and completely Rah Man and the sister is Rahim. If I use a short version of the ma, do you still remember it? So this is a meme, ma, right? I can use the long tail or the short tail. So I, I could have written it like this also. Same thing, just different way uh, the letter is written in calligraphy. Rahim. So we have the word Rahman and the word Rahim. What does the word Rahman mean? Merciful. The eternally merciful. Eternally merciful. And Rahman is associated with the entire creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Say, O Muhammad, tell them, invoke, ask, from Allah or invoke ask from Ar-Rahman however or whichever you invoke 
That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the only two names that were associated directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Ar-Rahman and Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you invoke, you can invoke with his name, Allah or Ar-Rahman. Hmm? No one has ever used this as an attribute. We can call people who are merciful and compassionate as Rahim. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Rasulullah sallallahu in the Quran, Bil mu'minina raufun rahim. Muhammad sallallahu to the believers, he is rauf, he is gentle and compassionate, uh, rahim. But no one ever has used the derivative ar-Rahman except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you remember, I told you that Musaylima al-Kadhab, the liar Musaylima, when he said, I am the Prophet of Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, glued to his name, al kadhab the liar, until the last day of judgment. Why? Because he had the guts to say that he was the Rahman of the area of Al-Yamama. He used to say, I am the Rahman of Al-Yamama. Huh? So the ulama say, لَمَّا تَسَمَّى مُسَيْلِمَةُ بِرَحْمَانِ الْيَمَامَ أَلْسَقَ اللَّهُ بِاسْمِهِ الْكَذَّابَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ when Musaylima called himself the Rahman of Yamama, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glued to his name the word al kadhab the liar, until Yawm al Qiyamah. Okay, so Rahman means eternally merciful. And Rahim means infinitely compassionate. Huh? So one is eternal and one is infinite, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahman and Rahim, and these are two Easy words because we, we, we use them a lot in Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim in Al-Basmala. Okay. Uh, we are almost done with the list and we are about to go to the exercises to show you the power of this, you know, uh, uh, way of understanding the Quran. Another word that we are going to cover today is the word the Rabb. What does the word Rabb mean? Sustainer. Lord. We can translate it as Lord, sustainer, controller, cherisher, all that. And this is the first name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to learn about his proper name. You know, when somebody gives you their uh, business card, you read their name and most often you read their profession or their position in the company. So to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the best example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, know that his name is Allah. Then the first attribute you should know about Allah is that he is Rabbul Alameen. And Rububiyyah has to do with relationship with his servants. He is the one who cherishes them, the one who sustains them, the one who takes care of them. Matter of fact, in Arabic, we call the parents, we call the father Rabbul Bayt. Rabbul Bayt. The one who sustains the house, the one who takes care of the house. And the lady, we call her Rabbatul Bayt. She is the one who takes care of the house, who cherishes the kids. So subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he revealed this ayah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, in the mind of the Arab, automatically it came to them that this creator is trying to reach out to us. He is telling us that he is the one who sustains us and takes care of us. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So the word Rabb means sustainer, controller, cherisher, the one who takes care of his creation, just like the parents take care of their household and they bring up their children. And this is an easy word because this is uh, a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that appears in Al-Fatiha. Okay. So let's review. How many words we have covered? We have covered the word Alim, which means all-knowing. Alim comes from the word ilm, which means knowledge. Allah is Al-Alim, He is all-knowing. What else we covered? The word Kul, Kaf Lam. Kul means everything. The word Shay. Shay. 
It means thing. Shay Hamza. Shay. What else we covered? Rahman. We covered the word Rahman. And we cover the word <coughs> Rahim, and then the word Rab. Very good. Okay, three more words. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and we are going to cover. Three more, inshallah. Okay, let's go on. The next word that I would like to cover, which rhymes with alim, is the word hakim. Hakim. What does hakim mean? Hakim. Huh? It comes from the word hikmah, which means wisdom. Huh? Rhymes with alim. Alim. In the Quran, you are going to find many ayat of the Quran referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Alim Hakim. Alim Hakim. Let's write the word Hakim. Hakim. Hakim comes from the word Hikmah, which means wisdom so now if i ask you to translate quickly the segment of the ayah from the quran wallahu alimun hakim what does it mean wallahu and allah is wallahu alimun all knowing hakim all wise wallahu alimun hakim and allah is all knowing all wise Very good. Another frequently uh, appearing word in the Quran is the word certainly or indeed. And in Arabic, how do we say it? Inna. Inna. Many ayat of the Quran start with this word. So this is e. Inna. Inna. So now if I tell you, so what was the meaning of inna again? Indeed. Certainly or indeed or for sure. It's like to emphasize the, the meaning, right? If I tell you, would you please translate for me, inna Allah alimun hakim? Very good. Inna Allah alimun hakim. Certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certainly Allah is all-knowing all-wise and you are going to see this word uh, like bread and butter you know in every in every single page in the Quran this word is going to appear in Allah Alim Hakim in Allah you know just you know used a lot and frequently in the Quran okay almost done another word before we go to the exercise is the word Aziz Aziz. Let's try it here. Aziz. Aziz. Come from the word Izza, which means pride or might or having the upper hand. Uh, somebody who is in control. Walillahi al Izzatu wali rasulihi. And the Izza. Uh, belong to Allah and His Messenger. Uh, wali rasulihi. Hmm? So the word Aziz means mighty, the one who has the upper hand, the one that has all pride, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, frequently repeated words are the combination of Aziz, Hakim. Wallahu Azizun Hakim. Like in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him how he brings the dead back to life again and he told him to cut the four birds, right? At the end of that ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Anyone can translate this segment for me? وَعْلَمْ 
Wa'alam, can you use your hearing? Wa'alam, what does Wa'alam mean? Knowledge. Knowledge or knowing. Anna, Indeed. it's a sister of Inna. Uh -huh. Anna Allah, Azizun, Hakim. <laughs> and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Almighty, the All Wise. Because He is the one who is bringing the dead back to life, so He has the upper hand. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make all the creation die, then bring them back to, to life, this is part of His wisdom. Wa'alam anna Allah azizun hakim. Okay. The last word according to my list is a pronoun. I'm going to erase this. And that pronoun is huwa. What does the word huwa mean? Huwa. He, he or he is. Remember in Arabic we don't have verb to be. So any pronoun could be translated as the pronoun itself or the pronoun plus the verb to be. So huwa means he or he is. Either he or he is depending on the sentence. Because in Arabic we don't have auxiliary verb, verb to be. It doesn't exist in Arabic. Okay? So huwa means he or he is. Um... For example, وَهُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ What does it mean? وَهُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ وَهُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ And he is the all-knowing, the all-wise. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say, he is Allah, one and only, or one and absolute, أحد. Say, he is Allah Ahad, one and only and absolute, right? Huwa, the word Huwa. Okay, so this is our bag for today. Let's review. The first word we covered was the word? Alim. Alim comes from the word Ilm. It has to do with knowledge. Alim, all knowing, has to do with the word ilm. Alim. Ilm is knowledge. Alim is the person who is knowledgeable. That's why people say uh, he is studying alim course. Right? Alim, from the word ilm. Alim is all knowing. The second word is kulli, which means everything. Every. And I told you that I used it in the Quran, it's frequently used as. Bikulli. To all. Kulli means all. Bikulli means to all. And the next word was what? Shay. Shay. What was shay? Thing. What was the meaning of the word shay? Everything. Thing, thing right? Shay means thing. Kulli shay means everything. So this is every and this is thing. They are used together a lot in the Quran. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. And Allah is known to everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, surrounds everything in terms of his knowledge, his wisdom, and his uh, power and might and and, and qudra. Okay. Then we covered Rahman, Rahman Rahim. Both are derived from the word Rahma, which means mercy, but the first one is usually translated as eternally merciful. This is the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the entire creation. And Rahim is the compassionate. This is a special Rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, the word Rahim was about 98% of the times used with the believers. And it was... Uh, 2% of the time used with general people, with all people. So this is like a special rahmah. This is the general rahmah. 
This special rahmah was used most of the time with the believers and you know, some percent of the time, uh, not a lot, with old people. We also covered the word Rabb, which means the sustainer, the controller, the cherisher. Think of it as a parent who is bringing his children up. So Allah belongs the best example and the perfect example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of all the aspects of the creation. And then we covered the word Hakim. What was Hakim? Wise. Wise. And then? Aziz. I'm going to write it here, the word Aziz. Aziz comes from Izza, which means might, power, the upper hand, all pride belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aziz from the word Izza, might. And then two key words, one was a pronoun and the other one was the certainly, right? So the pronoun was huwa, which means he or he is. And then we close with the word inna, which means indeed. certainly or indeed, certainly, indeed, for sure, absolutely, like that. So this is our bag for today. Any questions before we move on? Yes, brother. Can we also infer that Rabbil, <coughs> Rabbil Adami, that also he is the creator of all systems of knowledge? Not just, not, not just that he knows everything, but he is the creator of all the knowledge that we have and that we study. We, yes. We, we wouldn't know anything if it was not for Allah. Yes. Yes, one of the meanings of the word Rabb is that he is necessarily the creator. Although the word in Arabic is another word, which is Al-Khaliq, the Creator. But it is automatically understood that part of Allah being Rabbul Alameen, like appears in Al-Fatiha, that He is the Creator. He is the Creator, the Controller, and the Sustainer. Yes. Okay, so let's move on to the examples and see how well you are going to do on the mini quiz. Bismillah. Okay, who would like to translate the following? I have the ayah or the segment of the ayah. Who are Rahman or Rahim? Who are Rahman or Rahim? And he is uh, merciful and uh, compassionate. compassionate. Okay. Or you could say, Hua, Hua, he is Ar Rahman, the eternally merciful, Ar Rahim, the infinitely compassionate. That's a good translation, inshallah. Okay, let's move on. This one I'm going to write on the board. But then you can focus on the board, inshallah, and stay up. Make life easier, inshallah. Okay. I'm just going to write it, and you try to read it as much as you can and translate. <coughs> Another word that we are going to cover today is the word the Rabb. What does the word Rabb mean? Sustainer. Lord. 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 We can translate it as Lord, Sustainer, Controller, Cherisher, all that. And this is the first name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to learn about His proper name. You know, 
when somebody gives you their uh, business card you read their name and most often you read their profession or their position in the company so to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the best example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah know that his name is Allah then the first attribute you should know about Allah is that he is Rabbul Alameen and Rububiyyah has to do with relationship with his servants he is the one who cherishes them the one who sustains them the one who takes care of them matter of fact in Arabic we call the parents we call the father Rabbul Bayt Rabbul Bayt the one who sustains the house the one who takes care of the house and the lady we call her Rabbatul Bayt she is the one who takes care of the house who cherishes the kids so subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he revealed this ayah alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen in the mind of the Arab automatically it came to them that this creator is trying to reach out to us he is telling us that he is the one who sustains us and takes care of us alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen so the word rabb means sustainer controller cherisher the one who takes care of his creation just like the parents take care of their household and they bring up their children and this is an easy word because this is uh, a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that appears in Al-Fatiha okay so let's review how many words we have covered we have covered the word Alim which means all knowing Alim comes from the word ilm, which means knowledge. Allah is Al Alim, He is all knowing. What else we covered? The word Kul, Kaf Lam. Kul means everything. The word Shay. It means thing, shay, hamza, shay. What else we covered? Rahman, Rahman. We covered the word Rahman. And we covered the word Rahim. And then the word Rahim. Very good. Okay, three more words. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and we are going to cover three more, inshallah. Okay, let's go on. The next word that I would like to cover, which rhymes with Alim, is the word Hakim. Hakim. What does Hakim mean? Hakim. Huh? It comes from the word hikmah, which means wisdom. Huh? It rhymes with alim. Alim. In the Quran, you are going to find many ayat of the Quran referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as alim, hakim. Alim, hakim. Let's write the word hakim. Hakim, Hakim comes from the word hikmah, which means wisdom. So now, if I ask you to translate quickly the segment of the ayah from the Quran, Wallahu Alimun Hakim. What does it mean? Wallahu and Allah is Wallahu Alimun, all knowing, Hakim, all wise. Wallahu Alimun. Hakim and Allah is all knowing, all wise. Very good. Another frequently uh, appearing word in the Quran is the word certainly or indeed. And in Arabic, how do we say it? Inna. Inna. 
Many ayat of the Quran start with this word. So this is e. Inna, inna. So now if I tell you, so what was the meaning of inna again? Indeed. Certainly or indeed or for sure. It's like to emphasize the, the meaning, right? If I tell you, would you please translate for me, Inna Allah Alimun Hakim? Very good. Inna Allah Alimun Hakim. Certainly, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Certainly, Allah is all knowing, all wise. And you are going to see this word uh, like bread and butter. You know, in every in every single page in the Quran, this word is going to appear. Inna Allah Alimun Hakim. Inna Allah Ya'lamu Ma Fi Samawati Wa Ma Fi Ard. You know, just you know, used a lot and frequently in the Quran. Okay, almost done. Another word before we go to the exercise is the word Aziz. Aziz. Let's try it here. Aziz. Aziz. Come from the word Izza, which means pride or might or having the upper hand. Uh, somebody who is in control. وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ And the Izza uh, belong to Allah and His Messenger. وَلِلَّهِ uh, الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ hmm? So the word Aziz means mighty, the one who has the upper hand, the one that has all pride and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, frequently repeated words are the combination of Aziz, Hakim. وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ Hakim. Like in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him how he brings the dead back to life again and he told him to cut the four birds, right? At the end of that ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Anyone can translate this segment for me? وَعْلَمْ وَعْلَمْ Can you use your hearing? وَعْلَمْ what does wa'ala mean? Knowledge. Knowledge or knowing. Anna. Indeed. It's a sister of inna. Uh -huh. Anna Allah. Azizun. Hakim. Uh, and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the almighty, the all wise. Because he is the one who is bringing the dead back to life. So he has the upper hand. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make all the creation die and bring them back to, to life, this is part of His wisdom. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Okay, the last word according to my list is a pronoun. I'm going to erase this. And that pronoun is huwa. What does the word huwa mean? Huwa. He, he, he or he is. Remember in Arabic we don't have verb to be. So any pronoun could be translated as the pronoun itself or the pronoun plus the verb to be. So huwa means he or he is. Either he or he is depending on the sentence. Because in Arabic we don't have auxiliary verb, verb to be. It doesn't exist in Arabic. Okay? So, huwa means he or he is. Um, for example, wa huwa al alimul hakim. What does it mean? Wa huwa al alimul hakim. Wa huwa al alimu al hakim. And he is the all knowing, the all wise. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah, one and only, or one and absolute, ahad. Say he is Allah, ahad, one and only and absolute, right? Huwa, the word huwa. Okay, so this is our bag for today. Let's review.
The first word we covered was the word Alim. Alim comes from the word Ilm. It has to do with knowledge. Alim, all knowing, has to do with the word Ilm. Alim. Ilm is knowledge. Alim is the person who is knowledgeable. That's why people say uh, he is studying Alim course. Right? Alim. From the word Ilm. Alim is all knowing. The second word is Kulli. Which means everything. Every. And I told you that I used it in the Quran, it's frequently used as Bikulli. To all. Kulli means all. Bikulli means to all. And the next word was what? Shay. What was Shay? What was the meaning of the word shay? Everything. Thing, thing right? Shay means thing. Kulli shay means everything. So this is every and this is thing. They are used together a lot in the Quran. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. And Allah is known to everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, surrounds everything in terms of his knowledge, his wisdom, and his uh, power and might and 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 qudra okay then we covered rahman, rahman rahim both are derived from the word rahma which means mercy but the first one is usually translated as eternally merciful. This is the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the entire creation. And Rahim is the compassionate. This is a special Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, the word Rahim was about 98% of the times used with the believers. And it was 2% uh, of the time used with general people, with all people. So this is like a special Rahmah, this is the general Rahmah. This special Rahmah was used most of the time with the believers and you know, some percent of the time, uh, not a lot, with all people. We also covered the word Rabb, which means the sustainer, the controller, the cherisher, Think of it as a parent who is bringing his children up. To Allah belongs the best example and the perfect example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of all the aspects of the creation. And then we covered the word Hakim. What was Hakim? Wise. 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 And then, I'm going to write it here, the word Aziz. Aziz comes from Izza, which means might, power, the upper hand, all pride, belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aziz from the word Izza, might. And then, two key words, one was a pronoun. And the other one was Hua. the Hua. certainly, right? So the pronoun was Hua, which means he or he is. And then we close with the word Inna, which means indeed. certainly or indeed, certainly, indeed, for sure, absolutely, like that. So this is our bank for today. Any questions before we move on? Yes, brother. Can we also infer that Rabbil, <coughs> Rabbil Adami, that also he is the creator of all systems of knowledge? Not just, not, not just that he knows everything, but he is the creator of all the knowledge that we have and that we study. We, yes. We, we wouldn't know anything if it was not for Allah. Yes. Yes, one of the meanings of the word Rabb is that he is necessarily the creator, although the word in Arabic is another word, which is Al-Khaliq, the creator. But it is automatically understood 
that part of Allah being Rabbul Alameen, like appears in Al-Fatiha, that He is the Creator. He is the Creator, the Controller, and the Sustainer. Yes. Okay, so let's move on to the examples and see how well you are going to do on the mini quiz. Bismillah. Okay, who would like to translate the following? I have the ayah or the segment of the ayah. Huwa Rahman ar Rahim. Huwa Rahman ar Rahim. And he is uh, merciful and uh, compassionate. compassionate. Okay. Or you could say, Huwa, Huwa, he is. Ar-Rahman, the eternally merciful. Ar-Rahim, the infinitely compassionate. That's a good transition, inshallah. Okay, let's move on. This one I'm going to write on the board. But then you can focus on the board, inshallah, and stay up. Make life easy, inshallah. Okay. I'm just going to write it and you try to read it as much as you can and translate. <coughs> This is a segment from the Quran. He's the owner of everything. Okay, who wants to read the first word? Huwa. Rabbu Kulli Shay. Translation? He is the owner of everything. He is the Lord of everything. How do you feel? Good. <laughs> Extracting from Arabic. Okay, let's move to another one. Okay, I have, uh, <coughs> let's see if we can do this one, inshallah. <coughs> okay, I have uh, a small quiz here, it's a multiple choice. Let's see how it goes. One more example like this. This is the Al that I told you about, which means the. So without the Al, the original word is just, this is Ayn, ah, right? Aziz. Aziz and Ali. Ali. So now, who wants to read? Aziz Ali. Translation? And he is? The Almighty, the All Knowing. Al Aziz, Almighty, <coughs> Al Alim, All Knowing. Make sense? Inshallah. Okay, very good. Multiple choice, let's see. Select uh, the correct translation. The word inna means 
from surely if or accept surely, surely. surely. indeed very good the word kul means all or everything merciful eating thing everything. All. all or everything so remember the word kulli could be translated as all <coughs> or everything the word ali means wise honored knowing or knowledge knowing knowing, knowing. right alim and if i add the al to it it becomes the all knowing right because al means the in english al alim so alim is knowing al alim is all knowing aziz means mighty almighty exactly al alim becomes almighty the one that he has all the might okay how about the word hakim does it mean knowing lord kind or wise wise, wise. wise. very good okay now in this segment although it says choose the correct answer but i'm going to write it on the board you'll try it first and we'll see how it goes okay let me introduce just a little thing that will help you a lot in the quran remember the word huwa what was the meaning of the word huwa he, he or he is right huwa This uh, pronoun has an attachment with one letter, which means it could be substituted by one letter. And that letter is the ha. This is the uh, standalone ha, and this is the and ha. So it could be either one, right? In many words in the Arabic language, when I want to say it, referring back to something that already was said before in the context, I use the ha to indicate that. For example, uh, and before I go on, this has to do with third person, third person, right? Because hua means he. And the ha, the attachment of the ha at the end of the word will indicate a third person. I will give an example, it will become very clear inshallah. But remember that when I use the ha referring to, the, to, to uh, a certain subject in the Arabic, it refers to that thing in third person. So what was the meaning of the word Rabb? Lord, um, Lord. Huh? Lord or Lord, the Lord which means the creator, sustainer and uh, uh, cherisher or controller okay now if I add the ha to this what do I have here I said that the ha refers back to huwa which means he so now let's make a, a literal translation then we'll go back to the correct translation so if this substitutes the he it's like i'm saying the lord of he more correctly in english no no the lord of he the lord of him his lord got it because it refers back to him to he, but in English we don't say he, we say him. So, Rabb means sustainer. Rabbuhu, it means <coughs> his Lord or his sustainer. Right? Okay. What was the word, uh, the meaning of the word ilm? Ilm? Knowledge. Ilm is knowledge, right? Ilm. Okay. Now, how about if I attach the ha? Ilmuhu. His knowledge. Very good, his knowledge. Got it? So the ha would refer back to? He. He in a third person, so it becomes his. Got that, inshallah? Okay. 
Remember when I attached the word, the letter ba to kul? Let me erase this. The letter ba, b, it means in. Like for example, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So it's the ba, b, plus ism, which means the name. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Right? How about now if I put the ba, which means in, or the utility of, or it could be translated as using, using. In the name of Allah, using the name of Allah. Use in the name of Allah. In the name of Allah. Utilize in the name of Allah. How about if I put the ba attached to the ha? How would you translate that? In his. In his. Yes, very good. In his. In his. Or referring to him back to whatever the sentence is talking about. We will see the meaning of this as we put it in the context, inshallah. Okay, I just wanted to give you this because this appears a lot in the Quran also in conjunction with the words that we have covered today. Okay, so let's take some more examples. How will you translate that? Indeed, Allah, uh, He is acknowledged. Very good. Inna Allah, certainly Allah, and you got the word Ali, which means all knowing. How do you fit the word Bihi? Start with Him. In Him. Bihi. The, the Ba means in, and the Ha refers back to. Him or his is going to depend on the sentence. But generally speaking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, <coughs> Certainly Allah is all-knowing with him or about him, everything about him. Allah is all-knowing about him. Bihi alim. Inna Allah bihi alim. Okay. See another example. section okay now we are going to make it a little bit difficult using the same thing but now I'm gonna give you the English and you are going to try to put the Arabic words together just to exercise the brain and then we'll put the correct ayah if you don't you know get it completely And the first example that I have for you is He is Almighty and No, I'm sorry, not uh, not Almighty and he and uh, he is mighty and merciful. He is mighty and merciful. What do you think? I didn't say and he is. I said he is. How do you start? MashaAllah, beautiful class. You guys are super smart. He is. Huwa. Very good. Mighty. Azizun. Very good. Don't worry about these grammatical marks, we'll discuss them later, inshallah. We had to have like a couple of more uh, Arabic classes for introduction, but we decided to go through the course because of Ramadan to benefit more, inshallah, from reading the Quran. But we will come back to it, inshallah. 
So, huwa azizun and we said uh, wise. Did I say wise or merciful? Well, let's, let's translate wise. He is mighty wise. Hakim. Very good. How about and he is mighty wise? Just add the letter wa, which means and. Wa huwa azizun hakim. Okay, how about certainly Allah is mighty wise? In the Allah. No, I said certainly Allah. So just. Inna Inna Allah MashaAllah, you guys are very good Certainly Allah is Mighty Wise And notice that many times Most of the times actually In these closings of the ayat When you close the ayat uh, You don't have a wow here What's the difference? Most of the ayat of the Quran, you don't have a wow between the names. So, Azizun means mighty. He is mighty. And if the wow was here, if the wow was here, and he is wise. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a totally different meaning. He is saying that his izza, his might, is combined with wisdom. So you might find a person who, who is mighty strong because of their influence or power, you know, but they have no wisdom, so they destroy everything. <laughs> but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, in the very essence of his might and power and izzah, and he has the upper, upper hand, but this is the, you know, part of that sifa, part of that essence of Allah being the Almighty, that he is all wise at the same time, part of that sifa. Part of it. They are not separate. Hmm? So his izza, his might always comes combined with his wisdom. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. Okay, so we'll erase this one. Let's take another example. Okay, we took this one, alhamdulillah. Okay, who would like to translate? He is Lord of everything. Let's start part by part. He. Who? 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 It means the other color. Huwa means he. Huh? He is Lord of everything. Huwa? Rabbu? No, an alami means the world. Everything. Kulli shay. Kulli shay. Very good. Huwa Rabbu Kulli Shay. He is Lord of everything. everything. Of course, in English we have to add some junction words and helping verbs because of the difference in the structure of Arabic and English. But I mean, if even if you don't add them in your mind, your brain can easily calculate that with the power of the system, inshallah. Let's see if we have a couple more examples and we will finish. Okay, this example contain words that we did not cover, so I'll leave them. Okay.
translate the following into English to the best of your ability. Inna Allah bi kulli shay'in alim Surely or certainly Allah is knowing to everything Certainly Allah knows everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowing to everything Inna Allah bi kulli shay'in alim What would be uh, a simple translation into English to the Quranic segment? Wahuwa al Hakimul Alim. Let me write it. Okay, remember that the Al means the, right? So the original word here is Alim, Alim and this Alim. Hakim. So now Wahu Al Alimul Hakim. What does it mean? And he is all 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 MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And he is and he, of course, I have to add the is because Arabic does not have verb to be, English does. So when I translate, I should say, Wahua, and he is all knowing, all wise. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sense, inshallah? Any questions before we close today's session? So, what we have done today is choose some key words that are frequently repeated in the Quran. And inshallah, these words will be key to our understanding to the holy book from the Arabic directly. The more we grow our bag, the easier it becomes. Inshallah, at the end of this course, you will be able to understand if you can remember these words and review them every time, especially before you come to class. If you, you know, keep reviewing these words, inshallah, at the end of the course, you should be understanding a, a, a great deal of the ayat. And your brain will start doing it automatically without you realizing. So you saw that, alhamdulillah, in the first session, you were able to do that. So the more we cover, the easier and the better it becomes. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for everyone. Jazakumullah khair and keep us in your dua. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.